So welcome everyone. Um, my name is Mary Eleanor Power. For those who um, were not on the call when I introduced myself earlier, I am with the Faculty of Open Learning and Career Development with Dalhousie University as their Marketing Communications Director. And I am very happy to welcome you to today's webinar about studying English at Dalhousie University. And we have a number of people here with us um, to answer your questions. We have Laura Belgiorgio from our admissions team who is here to answer any questions you might have about admissions to the university overall. And Jennifer will, will be walking us through today's webinar. As well, we have David Packer joining us and David is the director of the English Language Studies Department um, within the faculty and is also um, here uh, ready to answer your questions. So without further ado, Jennifer, over to you. Okay, wonderful. Um, well, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm very uh, happy to be here with you today. Thank you, um, Mary Eleanor, for the introduction. And uh, I want to just begin today by acknowledging that we are presenting to you today from Mi'kma'ki, which is the uh, traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Um, so here is our plan and agenda for today, for this webinar uh, about studying English at Dalhousie University. Um, so my name is Dr. Jennifer McDonald, as Mary Eleanor has mentioned, and I'm going to tell you about a variety of different programs and course options uh, to study uh, English at Dalhousie. I'm going to give you some information and then uh, we'll have a question and answer session at the end. But as we go along, feel free to leave your questions in the Q&A or in the chat here in Zoom. I see one really good question already uh, from Melanie Coronel, and uh, I will get to that. The question of scholarships is always a popular one. We'll get to that at the end. I wanted to say as well, today uh, our webinar is a multilingual one. So in addition to, um, I'll be presenting in English, but para los que prefieren dejar preguntas eh, en español, en français, ou en portugais, you feel free to leave them in the question box in the uh, language of your choosing, and uh, we can respond to them. We can also respond to, um, to any inquiries in Mandarin, in Japanese, in German, Italian, uh, in Arabic, in Korean, uh, but that will have to come um, after the webinar. So, uh, without further ado, let's move on to, uh, to talk about, about Dalhousie. First, you may be wondering, what is Dalhousie and where is it? Dalhousie University is located in the province of Nova Scotia in uh, eastern Canada on the Atlantic coast of the continent. As you can see here, um, we are um, right on the coast. Uh, and we're about two hours by plane from Toronto, uh, two hours from New York. So this is so you can get an idea of where we are. A little bit of information about Dalhousie University for you. Um, Dalhousie is uh, one of Canada's uh, leading research universities. Um, it was founded in 1818, so it's quite an old university as well. And with this history, um, uh, Dalhousie brings uh, a wonderful track record in research, teaching, and innovation. Uh, you can see there's a variety of different programs, and we're proud to welcome uh, approximately 22% of our students at Dalhousie from 110 countries from around the world. Now, talking about studying English here at Dalhousie, what type of course is best for you depends on what you uh, want to do with that uh, information and that knowledge and what your goals are in the future. So if you're planning to study a bachelor's, a master's, or a doctorate in English at Dalhousie University, 
the English for Academic Purposes program is best for you. Now, if you are not planning on studying in Canada, but you do need um, uh, an advanced English level for work, for travel, or for your studies uh, in your home country, then the English for Students or Professionals course might be uh, the best option. Now, if you are very interested in coming to Canada for a culture and uh, immersion uh, experience, immersion in culture and language, the English in Canada program is probably best for you. So I'm going to tell you about these three programs today um, and uh, about what you study, how it works, the prices, and so you can decide um, which option might suit you best. Okay, so let's first start with that English for Academic Purposes program for those that want to come to Canada to study with us here at Dalhousie. Um, as I mentioned a few slides ago, Dalhousie has a, a whole host of programs at the bachelor's, master's, doctoral, uh, and non-credit uh, levels. And there, I can't talk about them all right now. Uh, there's more than uh, 200 programs, more than 4,000 courses that cover uh, 13 different faculties. Um, so you can see some of the faculties here. Um, the programs at Dalhousie uh, are known for their high quality instruction and teaching, their innovative content, the connections with industry, as well as uh, the workplace, and a focus on experiential learning. So programs where you do internships or maybe co-op programs to get in touch with uh, the currents on the job market uh, or in the research field. Okay, so let's imagine you're wanting to study a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral program here at Dow. To be admitted to a program, uh, many international students have to show proof of English language proficiency to get admission to programs. And there are three ways that you can do that. Um, the first way is very broadly put to show uh, a certain level of previous study in an English medium school or university. Now that one varies a bit depending on whether you're undergrad or a grad student. Um, another way you can show English language proficiency, of course, is to show a standardized exam score, an IELTS, TOEFL, or other exam score. Or you can um, prove your English language proficiency by doing the English for Academic Purposes program here with us. And this is what's called a pathway program. Um, so let me tell you about this pathway into uh, Dalhousie. Now, before I do that, I want to just mention something. Many programs at Dalhousie, at the bachelor's, master's, or doctoral level, offer something called conditional acceptance. What this means is you can apply to your degree program before you've fulfilled the language requirement. So that means if, if, you're, uh, if you still have to do some studying um, in order to meet the language proficiency requirement for admission, you can apply to that master's program or to that bachelor's program and uh, complete the EAP program before you begin uh, your degree. So um, this is an important thing to realize that you can start your application process before you've finished your English study. It's very important to check that the program you're, require, you're applying to offers the conditional acceptance option though. Okay, so let's imagine you want to study at Dalhousie um, and you want to choose the EAP pathway into that degree program. So what will you study in this English for Academic Purposes program? This is an academic English course. So you'll study not only reading, writing, listening, and speaking and vocabulary um, that you might have studied in some other courses you've done, but you'll focus on 
the academic writing skills, the listening skills that you'll need at university. So instead of writing, I don't know, an email to a friend, you'll focus on writing um, things like uh, course assignments, reports, or even preparing you to write a thesis if you're going to be doing um, a research program. You'll also gain a host of academic skills, skills that will help you to be successful at university, skills in research, academic integrity, the expectations of a Canadian classroom, et cetera. So it's, it's in addition to a language course, it's also an academic skills course, once again, to help you to be successful in your studies. In the EAP program, you have access to um, the, a whole, a bunch of university facilities, the libraries, um, the on-campus uh, medical clinic, uh, sports facilities, um, uh, a specialized advising team. And uh, so you really are um, a Dalhousie student uh, from the moment you join the EAP program. You'll also focus not only on general English skills, but the specialized language that you need uh, to work in your discipline. So whether that's English for engineering or English for biology, English for management, you'll start to develop the special English, the technical English um, that you'll need in your studies. Now, there are two modes that you can study on um, in this very intensive EAP program. Uh, you can study um, from September uh, 2021. You'll be able to study on, uh, excuse me, face-to-face -face here with us uh, in Halifax. Um, you can also study online. Um, and the online EAP program is uh, still very intensive. It's a mix of synchronous and asynchronous instruction. So what that means is uh, some of your time is uh, live together with your teacher, with your classmates on a video conference. Um, and uh, some of the time is asynchronous content. So um, uh uh, content that you can do at your own time in your own way. There are 12 week sessions of EAP uh, throughout uh, the year and in the summer we also have a shorter eight week session as well. All right, um, there's a couple of questions coming in in the Q&A um, from Vidal. I'll, I'll get to your question um, at the end. Great question about face-to-face um, or cursos presenciales, and when we'll be offering those this year? Good question. Okay, so that's English for academic purposes. Okay, now maybe that, maybe you're not planning to come to Canada to study, and maybe you would like to work on your academic and professional English, but from the convenience of your home and your home country and your home country. So the English for Students and Professionals course might be better for you. So what this course is, it's a 100% online uh, course that is has asynchronous and synchronous elements. Um, and these courses uh, begin every four weeks. And there's a, a variety of different topics. So first we have English for specific purposes. So this course as well allows you to focus on that specialized English of your discipline. So be it um, business, be it chemistry, um, be it engineering, you'll be able to focus and develop these specialized English skills. There's also a course in business communication. So as the name might suggest, this is a, an online English course uh, where you can uh, develop the English skills for the workplace. There's, but then we have two courses um, that are in specialized academic areas. We have a course in sustainability. So what this is, this is um, a course where you'll be learning about sustainability from a multidisciplinary perspective. You're studying about sustainability in English so you'll be developing your language skills uh, as well as your specialized, um, the specialized language connected to sustainability 
Um, but it's not an English course in the traditional sense where you're not studying grammar uh, or doing vocabulary exercises, but you'll be learning and expanding your English knowledge through the study of sustainability. Similarly, there's a course in web development. And this web development course, you'll learn about uh, the principles of web development in English um, and be improving your language skills at the same time. So as, this, as I was saying, all of these courses are available uh, online uh, to begin um, at the beginning of every month. Uh, now, also, uh, some courses that could be of interest to, to those of you who want to improve your academic and professional English are a series of fully online courses. These ones are synchronous, meaning um, the whole course is done uh, through video conference with your teacher and classmates. And these are shorter courses. They're 12 hour courses. They run two hours a week over six weeks. And as you can see, they're, um, we're offering them in a variety of different areas to work on your academic as well as your professional English language skills. Okay, now finally, for those of you who really, really want to have a full language and culture immersion experience, we have our English in Canada program. So uh, I've put up here, you can see this photo. Um, does anyone know? the name of this place. This is a, a very famous landmark close to the city of Halifax where we're located. Um, and it's part, it's one of the excursions that we do as part of the English in Canada program. If you happen to know the name of this landmark, please feel free to put it in the chat uh, or the Q and A. And I'll, I'll come back to what it's called uh, in a minute. So what's English in Canada? English in Canada, oh yes, I see it in the question and answer. Ellie, yes, Peggy's Cove. Great job, that's it. Um, and uh, so Peggy's Cove, just to go back, that is one of the places that we visit during this program because this program combines a couple of different things. It combines your studies in English and uh, in a, 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 an academic elective, as well as a sociocultural and touristic um, program that allows you to experience the city of Halifax and the region of Nova Scotia. So this is a face-to-face -face, uh, course. Um, and unfortunately, given the uh, health restrictions and travel restrictions, we can't offer this course face-to-face -face here in Canada in 2021 but we have very high hopes to offer this course in 2022, um, both in a, a winter edition in February, 2022, as well as a summer edition in June, July, and August of 2022. So let me tell you a bit about what you, you do during this course. So starting with the studies. So you, you study English, you study um, in English, language communications course, uh, where you, you know, you work on uh, all aspects of your English, reading, writing, listening, speaking, but with a lot of emphasis on building confidence and developing um, the uh, ability to have conversations and to feel uh, to strong and confident to use your English uh, in the community. You can also choose to do a university course in English. Uh, in the afternoons. And so we have a variety of elective courses, chronic conditions management in the field of health, engineering and the environment, web development, marine biology, and introduction to sustainability. This photo that you see here, this is taken from the marine biology course. If you remember that map I showed you at the beginning, Dalhousie um, and Halifax are located right beside the Atlantic Ocean. So during the marine biology course, for example, um, it's an experiential course. So you'll go down and you'll be doing like the student is in the photo, um, learning about the marine biology, uh, the plants and animals of this uh, ocean region. 
during the English in Canada program, you'll have a really um, deep and enriching cultural immersion experience because so you have two choices. You can either live in a university residence or you might choose to live in a homestay with a Canadian family. Either way, um, you'll experience lots of uh, opportunity for cultural exchange with you in residence and through this whole program is a team of what we call language assistants. And what these assistants do, they act as linguistic and cultural ambassadors. So they can answer your questions about, about language, about the Canadian culture, Halifax culture, Nova Scotia. Um, they are, um, most of the language assistants are either Dalhousie students or recent graduates. And uh, so they um, really provide uh, an extra layer of cultural uh, immersion. And they come with you on the excursions to visit different uh, landmarks, museums and cultural sites around the province of Nova Scotia. Um, as part of this program, as well as any of our face-to-face -face programs, you'll really get to know and experience the culture and nightlife of the city of Halifax. Um, the city of Halifax is a small city, but, uh, and to quote uh, David Packer, our director's uh, words, um, it's a small big city. So it's big enough, it has the um, everything you might need in a city. It has nightlife, restaurants, international airport, shopping, all the services, but it's a small city in that it's very walkable, it's very green, it's very welcoming, um, and there's a very vibrant cultural uh, life. Um, it has a lot of music, festivals, um, and sports activities uh, for those that enjoy that type of thing. So you'll get to experience uh, living here in Halifax um, with any of our face-to-face -face programs. Okay, so that was really quick. Um, a, a brief overview of, uh, of these three types of programs. I'm going to uh, invite you now to enter into the Q&A box um, any questions you might have about English language programs. Also, if you have questions about undergraduate admissions, as Mary Ellen mentioned at the beginning, our colleague uh, Laura Del, uh, Bel Giorgio is here to answer any of those questions. So I'm going to go to the question and answer box uh, and start with Melanie's question. And she asked if we have any scholarships to study English as a second language. So I'm going to say yes and no. The university, so Dalhousie University doesn't offer any scholarships to study uh, English language with us. However, many universities around the world, as well as governments, offer uh, scholarships for, um, for students to come and do a course like this one. So to give you an example, uh, we have collaborated with the government in the state of Mexico um, to, um, for scholarship students to come and study on our English in Canada program. Similarly, some universities offer scholarships for students studying there to study abroad and to study at a language program just like this one. So I recommend, Melanie, and anyone else interested, um, uh, I recommend that you ask uh, at your university if you're a student and you explore scholarship programs that might be offered by your city, state, or federal uh, uh, national governments uh, to study uh, English language. Okay, next, on to uh, Vidal's question. Detalles para tomar un curso de inglés presencial en este año. So, Vidal, creo que en esta información que acabo de, de uh, darles, yo he mencionado dos opciones para, bueno, dos opciones para estudio presencial. El primero en 2021, en el semestre um, del otoño, a partir de septiembre de este año, eh, Uh, ustedes podrán eh, matricularse en el curso de inglés académico. Más allá de este, esta opción, 
eh, la, las opciones presenciales eh, volverán a ofrecerse en 2022 con el, los programas de inglés académico y también el curso eh, de English in Canada. So, as I was saying to Vidal, uh, you can study face-to-face -face starting in September of this year on our English for Academic Purposes program. Otherwise, our English in Canada program will resume face-to-face um, -face in February 2022. Fingers crossed that all of the travel restrictions um, will be lifted by then. Okay, thanks for that question, Bidal. Um, Edson has a question. I have a question about the campus. What facilities does the university campus provide for a wheelchair user? Great question. Um, accessibility uh, is um, an important feature of, of the Dalhousie experience and the Dalhousie campus. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the buildings, um, residences, uh, they are, are fully accessible um, with uh, a variety of um, accessibility measures, um, uh, ramps, wheelchairs, uh, etc. There are residence rooms uh, that are um, accessible for wheelchair users um, and uh, our classrooms in the Mona Campbell building where we offer uh, the English language studies program uh, is, are also fully accessible. Um, it's in, I would be happy myself or um, uh, a member of our team, we'd be happy to follow up with you with some more detailed information about uh, the details of, of the uh, accessibility um, facilities at Dell, as well as some of the um, other services um, around accessibility and accommodations that the university offers. So uh, we'd love to follow up with you um, about that with some more details. Uh, next question. Um, I want to know what the university is accepted the Duolingo test. Yes, so for uh, admissions to for undergraduate study, uh, Dalhousie does accept the Duolingo um, uh, English test uh, for um, for undergraduate study. I don't know, uh, Laura, did you want to mention anything else about that? Yeah, I just mentioned we do accept the Duolingo test. Overall, we'll be looking for a minimum score of 115 and no less than 95 in each of the particular areas. Okay, great. Um, thank you, uh, Laura. Um, one thing to note is that uh, the Duolingo test is not accepted for graduate level study, so for master's or doctoral study, uh, just for undergraduate, um, as well as for placement in the EAP program. Um, Ellie is asking about uh, if we work with agents. We do, and I can see David is responding to Ellie's question. And um, thanks, David, for um, giving Ellie a bit more information about our Dalhousie's work with agencies. Uh, Luis, I'd like to ask if Dalhousie has co-op programs. Dalhousie does have co-op programs. Laura, maybe it, could you could you talk a bit about the co-op programs that Dal offers at the undergraduate level? Yes, happy to. So co-op or cooperative education program is available as part of many of our Dalhousie programs. Uh, they would be popular in programs like commerce where it is mandatory as part of that degree. But it's also available in what we consider site. So that's science, information technology, um, as well as a variety of our engineering programs. So quite popular in all of those fields. If you're wondering if a certain program offers co-op, a great place to start is dal.ca slash viewbook. And in that viewbook, next to every program that offers co-op, it would be listed there. So that's a great place to start. Co-ops typically equal one full year of paid work experience. And those paid co-op terms can be done in a variety of locations and are really great hands-on work experience as part of your university degree. So you're receiving pay and work experience as well as academic credit. Great. Okay, thank you, Laura. Um, the next question is about what percentage is required for masters? So. I, I, I think you might be referring to um, the admission percentage, so the GPA uh, that's required overall. This 
changes a lot depending on which masters you want to um, apply for. What I suggest, uh, if you're interested in knowing the specific admission requirements uh, for a specific masters, um, here on the screen, the third web address at the bottom, dal.ca slash grad, this is where you can get some information about specific master's programs and what percentage uh, is required for those. So um, that's if you're referring to the GPA. Um, if you're uh, referring to what percentage of on an English exam that might be required for a master's um, to be admitted to a master's, uh, they would be looking for a 7.0 uh, overall on the IELTS exam, and a score of 92 on the uh, TOEFL IBT, or a mark of A- uh, in the English for Academic Purposes program. So there are some specific programs that require higher than that, but that's uh, usually the minimum for most master's programs. Great, thank you. So Stephanie asks, Si, el IEP, el programa académico, viene junto en la letter of acceptance por lo tomar de este inglés básico. Okay, so two questions here. Uh, a propósito de la carta de aceptación. So, hay dos cartas de aceptación um, eh, que eh, recibirán eh, con sus aceptaciones a los programas diferentes en Dalhousie. Primero, hay el, la carta de aceptación al programa de grado, que sea pregrado eh, o de posgrado. Él viene separado y eh, hay una carta de aceptación separada eh, para lo que es eh, el programa de inglés académico o cualquier programa de inglés que ofrecemos. Eh, entonces, son dos procesos diferentes. Sin embargo, si eh, si tú, por ejemplo, eh, vas a postular a un programa eh, de, de pregrado o un programa de maestría o de doctorado, eh, indícanos eh, cuando apliques al programa de inglés académico y podemos ayudarte a coordinar los procesos de, de postulación a los dos programas. Tu segunda pregunta a propósito de, de, este, de si puedes tomar el programa desde el inglés básico, por supuesto. Eh, si prefieres eh, empezar desde el inglés básico, existe la opción. El, el programa de inglés académico se ofrece en cuatro niveles, desde un inglés más o menos básico hasta un inglés eh, bastante eh, avanzado. Hay una prueba de nivelación que se hace al momento de postular eh, y eh, a partir de, de, de los resultados de, de la prueba de nivelación sabrás eh, tu nivel y sabrás cuántos meses de formación y capacitación lingüística necesitarás para eh, cumplir con los requisitos de admisión a los programas de grado. So, uh, I was just telling Stephanie um, about the letter of acceptance process. There's two letters of acceptance, one to your degree program and one to the English language program. And academic English is offered at a variety of levels from um, a, a, an advanced beginners to an, a, an advanced level. There's a placement test that you do at the beginning uh, to determine how many months of English study you'll need to satisfy the admission requirement. Uh, to Stephanie and to everyone, if you're applying, if you're applying to a master's, a, a, a doctoral program, an undergraduate um, coordinate your, um, uh, we can help you coordinate your application and to make sure everything uh, goes smoothly. Okay. Other management course for management. Great question. I am going to um, just skip over that uh, for now. Um, and uh, maybe uh, we can, um, uh, I think I'd recommend to, to have some really specific details around management courses um, uh, to, to connect with 
Faculty of Management's uh, uh, site on the uh, Dalhousie webpage. And you'll, there you'll see the variety of undergraduate, graduate um, programs uh, that the Faculty of Management offers. There's a lot of really great options there for you. Okay, Maximo has a question about paying and tuition, exactly. So, si los precios son de pago parciales o hay que darlos todos juntos. For the English um, programs, um, when you apply, uh, you uh, play, pay an, uh, an application fee um, uh, at the moment of app applying, and then you have until for the English uh, for Academic Purposes program, you have until the beginning of the course to pay uh, the remaining tuition. So you can space that out um, over the time between when you apply and when you begin the course. So si es posible eh, eh, hacer pagos parciales eh, en el tiempo entre el momento de postular al programa de inglés y el momento de empezar y iniciar los estudios. También existen opciones, estamos flexibles, um, es posible uh, de, de negociar un horario de pagos um, y uh, para, um, para crear un calendario de pagos uh, que convenga a, a, a tus necesidades. Ok, so Yahaira has a question. Do you have the opportunity to people from Latin America and from Honduras, Central America? Yes, we, Dalhousie, um, in all of Dalhousie's uh, degree programs, as well as the English language programs, we uh, have a long and strong collaboration with lots of different um, countries in Latin America, um, uh, including Honduras. So uh, there are a, a variety of Honduran students in, uh, studying English language, studying bachelor's, master's, and doctoral uh, studies here with us at Dell. So we welcome you and we would love to have you study with us from Honduras. Okay, uh, what is the, what would the admission process be? Okay, so anonymous attendee. Um, let's, there's, there's kind of, there's three different admission processes depending on what you're applying to. So I'm going to talk quickly about the English language one and give you some very brief information about master's uh, admissions process. And then Laura can help us uh, understand the undergraduate admissions process. So for the English language studies programs, the admissions process is quite straightforward. Um, you would go onto the website here, dal.ca slash ELS, um, and you would apply to the program you're interested in. Um, the, the information required is minimal. You would indicate which program you'd like to do and when, and um, if, uh, and, and that's basically it. If you have test scores, you know, if you have a previous IELTS score or something, you can submit that as well. Um, but Otherwise, you'll be contacted about doing a placement test to find out your level. And, uh, and that's it. It's quite straightforward. Um, for master's programs and, and doctoral programs, I would suggest visiting the site here on the screen, dal.ca slash grad. And there you'll find the details about um, the admissions process to the different grad graduate studies programs. Um, it involves uh, usually filling out an, an application form, submitting documents such as your uh, previous uh, transcripts from your previous studies uh, and letters of reference. Um, there are often other uh, documents required and, um, and submitting that online, following up with, uh, with physical documents um, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, and so um, that's what in a nutshell, that's what the, the graduate admissions process requires. Um, but I really suggest visiting uh, the site to find out about the specific admissions process and requirements for the program that interests you. Laura, could you tell us about the undergraduate admissions process? Yes, so undergraduate admissions is also rather straightforward. 
The first thing that you need to do is decide which academic term you would like to begin your studies in, as that will determine when you should begin applying and when you can expect to hear back regarding a final decision. And so our primary intake period is September of each academic year. So that's when most of our courses at Dalhousie would begin. We do also offer winter intake in some programs. So it's important to note which program you're interested in studying in and does it offer the intake period that you might be looking for. So for students looking to begin in September of any year, you're going to begin the application process almost a full year prior in October. And so that's when you can first begin to apply to a program. And all programs have an online application form that you'll complete. You'll pay a $70 Canadian application fee, and then you're going to provide documentation. So that could include transcripts from a current institution that you might be attending, whether it be a university, college, or high school level program as well. From there, we'll do an initial review of your application, um, and then you'll hear back regarding your decision. And um, so you may receive something like a conditional acceptance, which would allow you to uh, study at Dalhousie once you meet the language requirement. And um, so that would be a formal letter of an offer that you could receive. Um, and you might also be asked for various documents throughout your examinations in your home country based on your current curriculum. And um, so more information typically in the spring for students applying for fall of an academic year as well. And so that's kind of our general process. You're going to apply online, pay the application fee, and submit documentation. And then you're going to wait for information from us. We do also offer a wide variety of online information sessions. So if you're wondering about what program might be the right fit for you and what the upcoming dates and deadlines are, as well as for more information related to academic-based scholarships, uh, our team would offer support and you would get more information on that once you submit an application to Dalhousie. Great. Thank you, Laura. Um, so I, I'm just looking down the list of questions here. Masters and uh, English language. So thank you. Um, there is uh, another question. So Duolingo is not for masters. Exactly. Um, Dalhousie only uh, accepts uh, Duolingo, the Duolingo English test for admissions at the moment for undergraduates. Okay, next question from Erika Peña. Uh, what is the online program for professionals to obtain a certificate to be able to apply to an international job? Okay, so this is, um, so there's a couple of, um, <coughs> of options here. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, now, at the completion of any one of the English language programs that I've talked about today, so English for academic purposes, English for students and professionals, or English in Canada, every participant receives a certificate. Um, and this certificate uh, says that you've completed uh, this course at Dalhousie University. <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, in certain cases, um, employers uh, will accept, uh, they, they see the certificate, they see that it's from, from Dalhousie. Uh, in many cases, the certificate indicates the CEFR level, so it indicates the, um, the language level of the course that you were studying. So that can also indicate to international employers um, your approximate language level. Now, if you're asking about, Erika, if you're asking about um, some of the formal standardized uh, international English exams, such as IELTS uh, or TOEFL, um, in our programs, our programs are not um, preparatory programs for those exams. However, what many students find is they learn so much uh, in our programs, in the academic English, English for students and professionals, or English in Canada, they learn so much, their English improves so much during their time in our courses, that when they 
right after finishing a course with us, they do the uh, maybe the IELTS exam or TOEFL or another exam like that. And they find uh, that their, their uh, score on those exams does increase significantly. So um, that, that's what I would, I would recommend. You know, you have your, uh, your certificate from Dalhousie and you might also consider doing um, an international standardized exams after completing a course with us as well. Um, and uh, Erika, as well as anyone, if you have, if you have very specific questions about your situation um, and things that you would like to um, ask about that are maybe more specific, feel free to um, to get in touch. I'll, I'll share my our, our email addresses on the next page. Uh, if you have some specific circumstances you'd like to uh, to uh, ask about, okay. A question is university accepted the pathway program for masters and for allowing for visa processing. So your fir the first part of your question, yes, the university accepts um, the English for Academic Purposes program as a pathway for master's students. So that means if you study English for Academic Purposes with us here at Dalhousie, you don't have to do the IELTS or the TOEFL exam in order to uh, be admitted to satisfy the admission requirement to the master's programs at Dell. You can just go um, directly from the English program into your master's uh, if you've been accepted uh, and you've satisfied all of the other admission requirements. Um, allowing for visa processing. Now, um, uh, the, okay, I think I understand what you mean. So the letter of acceptance that you'll receive from the English for Academic Purposes program uh, comes with an, a letter for visa purposes. So you present uh, that letter, the letter of acceptance into English for Academic Purposes, you present it along with your letter of acceptance into a master's program, and you present those um, at the uh, Canadian uh, consulate, the visa processing center uh, in your country, and that will allow them to issue you um, the, the required immigration documentation, um, student visa and study permits uh, to be able to come to Canada. Okay, great question. Okay, es posible postularse tanto yo como mi esposa y hijos. Okay, so Maximo, um, there are a couple of, uh, of different things. So first, Yes, if you want to, um, if if the whole family wants to study, it's definitely possible for everyone to apply uh, to study either in the same or in different programs um, at Dow. They're also on the, um, uh, I, I won't get into the specific details around immigration, uh, study permits, et cetera. Dalhousie does have an immigration advisor that can advise around these things. But um, very generally, I, I will say that um, if, if one person uh, in the family applies and, and is accepted to Dalhousie as a full-time student, um, they can apply for um, uh, permission for their spouse and or children to accompany them and to come to Canada. Um, and so they can stay uh, together. And uh, in many cases, the spouse um, uh, can apply for an open work permit uh, while the other spouse is uh, a full-time student. So once again, there are um, admission, uh, in immigration advisors at Dell that can um, answer those questions about the immigration side of things, but it is definitely possible. There are lots of families um, who study at Dalhousie in one of these uh, configurations. Um, okay, Maximo asks, all documentation to admission is in the native language or is all in English? Do I need to translate it? Um, Laura, would you like to tell us a little bit about the documentation uh, and the language required for admissions? Yeah, so our application is fully in English. And um, so that would be something to consider when you're going through the application process. And there are PDF copies available online, so that would be an easier way for you to access that information as well. 
Um, and then there is another question there um, regarding admissions without IELTS. Um, and as Jennifer would have mentioned earlier, there are a couple of re um, ways to meet the language requirement at Dalhousie, some of them being the programs that we've mentioned today. If you have previously studied in an English language institution, you are able also to meet the requirements in that format, but you would have to provide additional documentation to the admissions team just to prove that you have previously studied in English. And then there are a variety of testing options other than IELTS as well. And um, if you're looking for more information, one of the most accessible ways to find that is dal.ca slash English language requirements. Um, and that would give you a variety of information regarding the acceptable tests, as well as other ways that you can meet the language requirement, um, including these courses and programs. Can I ask one other question, uh, Laura, just to follow up on, on, on Maximo's uh, inquiry. Um, so if I have my transcript from my um, from high school studies or um, my previous studies, my diploma, and that's in another language, uh, I have to get that translated, correct? That's correct. So you need to get that translated. Uh, the only translation that we can typically do on site is French, um, but all other languages would need to be translated um, prior to being submitted. Okay, great. I think that answers. Uh, Maximus question. I'm going to go to, so I've, I've gotten to the end of the questions in the Q&A box. I'm just opening the chat to look there for questions. There's a question from uh, Gino. What are the minimum requirements to apply for EAP? And I would like to study a master's degree in computer science. Okay, so the, um, the minimum requirements for EAP, uh, as I was saying earlier, there's the, there's not really a, a, a high level of um, requirements for the EAP program. So you more or less just fill out your information, indicate when you'd like to um, study, and uh, we will um, contact you about doing a placement test to, to find out your language level. Um, and, and then you start, basically. It's relatively straightforward to apply to EAP. Um, if you'd like to study a master's degree in computer science, that's perfect. We have a lot of computer science students studying English with us before they start uh, their master's degree. Um, and the, so don't forget, though, that the process of applying to the master's of computer science would be a separate one. Um, and uh, so um, I, I do encourage you to check out the, the variety of master's programs in computer science uh, on the Faculty of Computer Sciences uh, webpage. Uh, one last question uh, for us in the question and answer box, and then um, maybe we'll wrap it up for today. Uh, is the spouse is coming together with the academic student who gets a visa for study at Canada? And if yes, then he has to give the IELTS. Okay, so, um, this is a very good question about um, spousal um, uh, travel and uh, accompanying a full-time student. I think that this is probably um, a, a question that's best answered by one of um, Dalhousie's immigration advisors. They can really um, they can really answer a lot of questions around. Um, study permits, work permits, the documentation, applying, applying uh, as a student or as a spouse, et cetera. So that's um, a really good question uh, for, uh, for them. So I encourage you to, um, to be in contact with us and we can connect you to uh, some of the immigration advisors uh, here at the university. Okay, so Thank you for all of these wonderful questions. Um, if you still have questions, if you're wondering about uh, anything we've talked about today, uh, here I've put um, my, uh, the email address for our department, esl at dial.ca. I have my email address as well. Um, feel free to get in touch. Um, Laura, what is the best way for someone to get in touch with if they have further questions about undergraduate admissions. Great, so I have put my email address as well in the chat, you'll find it near the top. And um, so you're welcome to get in touch with me and I'm happy to direct your question um, to the appropriate person or answer any questions related to admissions, programs, scholarships as well. Wonderful.
Um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your attention. Um, and it's wonderful to meet you today. And we hope to uh, welcome you to Dalhousie, be it in an online course or here on campus in Halifax. We hope to welcome you very soon. So thank you and have a good day. <laughs>